And here is the uh, presentation of the difference between what you call the working envelope and a working space. A working envelope is the region of space a robot can encompass. Let's consider it the theoretical envelope. Working space, as opposed to working envelope, is the region in space a robot can fully interact with. The fact that a robot can go up to that particular point, it doesn't mean that it can be fully interacted at that particular point because of some mechanical limitations, because of some vibrations that might take, take place in its arm. Because we, when we're lifting heavy things where the full arm, when the arm is fully extended outside, might create some reliability program. So, mathematically speaking, theoretically speaking, the envelope is what it is. But effectively, fully interacted is maybe 70% of it, 80% of the envelope working space. And now we touch the principal types of the robots. And basically, there are six principal types of robots. On the top left uh, corner, uh, we see a rectangular coordinate robot. It's an X, Y, Z coordinates, 90 degrees one to another, and the working space is like a cubical space. Working space and working envelope. Remember, in this particular stage of the seminar, let's assume that the working space is equal and identical to the working envelope. So the working envelope, or space for the matter, of the rectangular coordinate robot is a cubical space. Going down to the spherical coordinates robot, where we have a, an arm, and we have a pitch, we have a roll, and we have a yo of the end effector, and we can rotate left and right to almost 360 degrees, so we do see here a presentation of the working space slash envelope in a spherical coordinate robot. And then we have the gentry robot. Very similar to the rectangular one, except that the rectangular one, the, the end effect is always within the cubical working space. In a gentry robot, the, the uh, working envelope can be l wider, bigger, higher, taller than the, um, than the uh, working envelope itself. So the end effect can go outside the mechanical structure of the robot. So that's a gentry uh, robot. We have a cylindrical coordinate robot where we have a three-dimensional that when we move the robot, let's say 360 degrees, and the arm can go up and down, we basically get a cylindrical working envelope. Then we have the articulator arm robot. This is the six degrees of freedom that we talked before. And it has uh, a working envelope, a very interesting one that we'll see later on in the, uh, in the seminar, in the coming slides to, uh, to go. But the articulator arms have an arm which is divided into sub-arms. A complete arm that's divided into set of sub-arms, allowing it to reach different points, different um, different points from different directions within the working envelope. And then the last one, the, the one on the bottom right, is the scar robot. It has um, uh, a single axis rotational uh, degrees of freedom. We see a different, we see two, three parts in the Scara robot. Each of them has in a different plane, but it's basically the same axis, but different heights. So it allows it to create, again, um, a cylindrical type of working envelope, but in a different fashion. And here's a summary of the workspace of each particular uh, robot that we talked before. So we see the Cartesian robot, the XYZ robot. It has a cubical, a rectangular type, three-dimension shape. We have the cylindrical one. We see the cylindrical uh, workspace. We see the, the spherical one, which is similar to the cylindrical one, except that because we have the pitch of the end effector, 
it can be in this position and rotate, or it can be in this position perpendicular to the, to the main line of the robot, so it will be somewhat further away in terms of the working envelope. So we do have a cylindrical workspace similar to the uh, cylindrical robot, but a little bit wider than that because of the movement of the end effector in the pitch degree of freedom. Uh, then we have the scar one. Uh, when we see the, the um, uh, workspace of the SCARA, we actually see a cylindrical type of workspace except that it, does, it is not 360 degrees because of the structure, the mechanical structure of the robot itself and the sub-arms of the SCARA. Again, remember, the, the arms, the sub-arms of the SCARA are in the same directions and same axis, just different levels. And then we have the articulated robot. The articulated robot has set of degrees of freedom, taking the base, taking the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the hand, all these things, breaking them down, give us something similar to the spherical workspace, but can reach every single point within that workspace, as opposed to spherical. Spherical cannot reach all the points within its workspace. For example, articulated robot, because it has all these degrees of freedom, can actually work backwards, can actually does this shape and work from the other side, work from the bottom, something that the uh, spherical robot cannot do. A spherical robot will just move, it has a pitch and roll, it has its yo, it has these three degrees of freedom, but it cannot work underneath itself, what the articulator robot can. And here is an pre interesting presentation of the robot uh, work envelope. We have the maximum envelope colored in white. We had restricted, restricted envelope in these uh, broken lines. And we have the actual operating envelope in black. And it is in two axes. The upper line is uh, looking from the top and the bottom uh, line is basically looking from the side. And if we actually looking at what actual operating envelope of, and this is particular uh, slide is an articulator robot, we do see that out of the entire maximum envelope that this articulator robot is, theoretically speaking, the operating envelope is only a small portion of it. And this is the explanation of the difference between working envelope and working space. In this uh, articulated robot case, the restricted envelope is quite big. It has an area in X direction and in Y direction that the robot is restricted from being there because of hazardous uh, conditions, because of no unreliability of its actual process that cannot be guaranteed of the, uh, of, the pr of the outcome. So the operating envelope of an articulated robot is much, much smaller than the maximum theoretical mathematical envelope.